We get questions all the time about what is appropriate for pricing. Are we too high? Are we too low? What should I be charging? And the answer is always, I need to know like 10 different things before I can tell you what your pricing could be, should be, and what would be appropriate. If you struggle with that, I'm gonna list out and explain these 10 things so that you have more of a foundation to go and build off of as you start to build out your pricing structure. All right, number one is your website and your portfolio. And when I'm looking at your website and your portfolio, I'm looking at your ability to curate your portfolio. So to weed out the things that no one should ever see because it's not pushing you to ultimately where you wanna be. A lot of people struggle with this and they're completely blinded to the way that they're perceived through their online appearance. So I need to see your website, I need to see your portfolio and whether or not you have the eye to curate your work and to curate what you're showing the world. Number two, I need to see your social media presence. Your social media presence is super valid. It is not something that some people say like, oh, you know, the algorithms are crazy. Sure, they are. A lot of times I find that people's websites and their portfolios on their website don't match what's happening on Instagram. It's a huge flaw that can be easily overlooked. So you have to have consistency because that builds trust and ultimately builds credibility and credibility builds value, which ultimately affects your pricing. So when you're posting on social media and you're trying to figure out what does my content look like, my encouragement to you is to be intentional, to add in your personality, let people get to know you, but don't get so hung up on the engagement levels because you're not just trying to get engagement and reach new people. Sure, that is, that's a whole different topic. It's very important, but when it comes to portfolio and pricing and what people think of you, you have to see it through the lens of, am I the same person on my portfolio website as I am? Does Instagram support and strengthen my portfolio and vice versa? You want there to be consistency and you want there to be intentionality. All right, so number three, I am normally looking for, and you can pay attention to, the overall presentation of your brand. So how are you represented through a brand's lens? So, so for example, there are some people who run businesses that the logo looks great, but they consider that their brand, their logo. A, lo a brand has never been watered down to just a logo. And if it, and if it is, then it's not really a great brand. A great brand is personality, the look, the feel, the consistency, the curation of work, the way that you present yourself along with how you do your work, along with your work. It is this beautiful combination of you represented in business form. If there's no connection to a photographer, no connection to the small business owner, when I'm looking at all these things, their brand feels empty and it feels dead and it feels like just this boring place on the internet. And it makes sense to me why a lot of people might find them and inquire, but the ghosting process is real. All of that plays into how valuable you seem and how much interaction you're gonna get, how many inquiries you will get and how many conversions you will get. It is all a part of the bigger picture and I can't neglect or avoid paying attention to not only your work, not only your Instagram, but also your overall brand. So number four is your pricing history. So sometimes I've been in conversations with people and they're talking about their pricing and all of a sudden they tell me, well, I just bumped up by $3,000. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. That is significant. I really needed to know that. So when you're trying to put all the puzzle pieces together and figure out what is going on with my pricing, what is happening here, this is significant. Did you just change your price? What is your pricing history? Have you made an immediate change? Have you given yourself six months to be able to wait it out? Because price changes take forever to really come into effect. You have to be patient. You can't just bump your prices up and then get three inquiries that don't go anywhere and think, oh, it was a bad decision. You have to give yourself more time. So understanding your price history is crucial to understanding where you're going and defining why you're experiencing what you're experiencing when it comes to booking in your business. All right, so number five, I want to understand your booking rate. I see this happen so often. People have a huge year. Okay, so 2022 was massive. You had 25 weddings, it was huge, and now, 2023, you only have five weddings booked. What's happening there? Well, once I start asking about your booking rate and your booking history, not just your pricing, but your, your booking history, then I start to understand you were so busy in 2022, you didn't market at all. 
You were just trying to do the work, but the world doesn't know that you're booking weddings and shooting every weekend because you didn't show anything. And so you dropped your workflows. You just got galleries out. You didn't market online. You didn't update your portfolio. No one knows that 2022 was an amazing year for you. And you're seeing the repercussions of that with your booking season for the next year that's coming, that's coming up. So I got to understand that background and you have to understand that background when you're starting to process through what is happening with my pricing. So all of that leads me to number six, which is similar to the past two, but slightly different. If I was sitting down with you to try to figure out your pricing, or if you were doing this yourself in your office, think through what is your actual problem? Is it an inquiry problem or is it a marketing problem? So if you're getting inquiries and you're getting ghosted, something's happening with your pricing, your client experience is so, as soon as they enter in your inbox, something's happening there, but you're reaching people. People are finding you. They're just not booking. That is a completely different problem than not getting inquiries at all. That means you're not out there. People aren't connecting with you. They're not finding you. They're not coming to you. That's a marketing problem. So I need to understand those things in order to understand what is happening with pricing. Number seven is I think your response to inquiries is just as important as almost any part of the process. Your response time, what you say to them, and how engaged you are. I won't get into the weeds because I teach about all of this in our pricing guide. You can get our pricing template where you can literally download everything we say and what we do in regards to delivering our pricing to clients. But in a nutshell, when you present your prices, The way you present them matters. The way you introduce yourself and form a personal connection matters. The order in which you introduce them to yourself and your brand, your philosophy, and then show them the packages, that order matters. There are so many things that come into play when you get that first inquiry and you give them the pricing and you start that conversation. And I, if I was sitting down with you, I'd want to look through, what does that look like? How personal are you? Are you asking them questions about themselves that allow them to talk about their story? Don't make it all about you. I know there, I could teach a whole course about that, but that's something I'm paying attention to. It's an important part of your process and your business that does have an effect on what you should be charging and why people may or may not be booking. All right. So number eight, it's important to understand the area you're in and what your local industry norms are. So if you are literally in the middle of nowhere, Montana, but it's a wedding destination area, that is very different than if you were in a small town in the middle of somewhere else in Montana, but it's not a wedding destination. Your pricing is going to be different. Your area, your local industry, the norms in your area do play an effect on what you can charge and how much you can charge a client and what high end looks like versus more of a budget bride. So your area plays an effect and a role on your pricing structure. And all right. So number nine is your client experience. This sounds like, isn't all of this about client experience? Sure. But when you look at my business and you look at our pricing and you look at like, how do we charge $12,000 for a wedding? Like we, our pictures are pretty, but they're not that great. I mean, they're not like award-winning best in the world. How can you charge 12 grand? Well, so much of what people pay for from us, if you were to ask our past brides, is the way that we make them feel the experience they get working with Michael and I, the peace and security that we bring to their wedding day, the trust, all of that encompasses our value. And so I can look at your website and your social media and your process with pricing and whether or not you're getting inquired, all the things I previously mentioned. But if you show up on the wedding day and you're a complete dud, that's going to affect your pricing. (laughs) That's going to affect whether or not people perceive you as I'd pay that. You have to have something more than just your images. Back 14 years ago when I started, my images were enough. They're not enough anymore. And thankfully, my client experience has always been the most valuable part of what I offer. And I have to do a really good job educating other photographers about how valuable that is because not many people think that way. They put value in their images and not in the experience. So if you are not in our business collection, which is basically a year-long business course where I teach all this stuff. Um, you need to know that there are two different sides to client experience. There's literally like the client experience workflow where we like on this week, we send this gift. We surprise them after wedding with this canvas. We, all those things that people talk about and they love like, Oh my gosh, look what our photographer sent. That's amazing. But then there's also the in-person example of the way that I choose to enter a room 
the way that Michael connects with groomsmen, the way that I tr ha have a lot of different approaches to what I want to feel like another bridesmaid. I don't want to feel like this hired hand that came in and I'm above everybody else in authority. I want to make the day even more fun and also create awesome images. So I become the hero of the day and there's so many ways that I do that. That, that, that is how I built this whole thing. I built it off of the understanding that my images were gonna cap me. I was gonna be limited if I based my pricing off my images, but I have something else that makes me competitive above the rest that no one can compete with. All those things play into how valuable are you as a photographer? What are people going to talk about and how does this, how does this affect your price point ultimately? So all of that leads to number 10. Number 10 is that the, the only way you can get better is if you practice this and if you have experience in this. Do you need 10 years to get to an experience level where you could charge five figures for a wedding package? No, people, people grow super fast all the time. Do you need to be able to do all the things that I just said? No, you can do it in your own way. And when you start to think about business outside of the typical wedding photography box, you start to get creative and you start to get noticed. And so you need to have some time to build this up and to practice and to get better. I'm 14 years in. This summer, it'll be 15 years of this. That makes me feel old. But what I've learned is that this concept and all of these things that I'm talking about stand the test of time. They are still true today, the same way they were true in 2008. If you were just looking for a place to have more conversations like what you've experienced in this episode, you need to become a member of KJ All Access, which is basically a curated community where I get to help photographers solve their real life problems in a real life way, where I get to be a part of their life. I get to offer solutions. I also get to allow you to see behind the scenes content of how I actually put this stuff into practice. So that information is linked below as well. And that is the most affordable way to have access to our community, our most serious, dedicated KJ students, and also have access to me every month through a coaching call. So all that information is below. I hope this was helpful for all of you who struggle with the business side and with pricing. This is a great place to start when you start diving into making decisions and changes in your business. Bye. See you next time. Bye. Bye.